What is up, everybody? If you want to know about Sci-Fi's new show, Ghost Wars, we have the star in the house, Candace McClure, with us. All that and more on Black Hollywood Live's Conversations. You are tuned in to Black Hollywood Live Conversations. I see you, Candace. Even right? with the mug. You got the mug, too. <laughs> right? You gotta. You know, it's all about the head nod, you know? Candace chose this song, by the way, everybody. I did. We're just feeling it. We're feeling it right now. I did. <laughs> now you know now what happens know. Now in my what, Uber. Now we know what mood <laughs> Candace is in right now. Now you know what happens in my Uber. I'm just telling you. Now we know you. what's going on in the Uber. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Black Hollywood Live's Conversations. I'm your host, Dario Christian. If you haven't already noticed, I have one of the most talented actresses in the game with the best eyes, I must say, Miss Candace McClure in the house. What's up, Candace? Hey, how you doing, Dario? How you doing? I'm you know, all right. The, you got me in a good vibe. Good. You know? That's what we need. We need good space, good energy. Good energy. It's a good day. You matched the decor. I planned it. Yeah. Oh, I did. Oh, did you really? I did. I look thought it you up. were joking when you said it. Well, I just dyed my hair purple. I know you can't see it. I went to my hairdresser. I was like, the show's wrapped. I want unicorn hair. And he was like, I'll give you this. <laughs> I don't even see the purple. But yeah, you gotta see it in the light. That's why I was like, I can't see it. Yeah, it looks, it I almost looks like, like light brown almost. Maybe it's the yellow you know lights what? You gotta look in the, we'll, we'll check it later. No, we're gonna it's check under it. there. We're gonna it's check it. Well, you have an secret. exciting day today. You I have do. the premiere tonight of Ghost Wars on Sci-Fi. I'm actually so excited. I mean, I saw the trailer for this and I was Did very you? excited too because I'm a, I'm a supernatural sci-fi-ish type of guy. Then this we, is right up your alley. This is right up my alley. This is right. And you guys did very well at Comic-Con when it premiered. People were talking about it and I it was mean, buzzing around. I mean, that's pretty serious. We had packed rooms because we went down there. We weren't really sure what we were going to expect. Um, I felt really good about it because we get along really well. And there's yeah. just a lot of like camaraderie amongst us. I know everybody says that, but this time it's actually true. Um, so we were just there having a good time, but we got into the room. The room was packed. There were people standing in the back, people lining up to ask questions. I mean, we had some, we have some heavy hitters. We got some yeah. big players, yeah, you know. Yeah, you do. Um, so uh, even though in my mind they were there for me, I know. <laughs> There were other people I had to share the stage with, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, she's got the 5'2 petite, you know, size, but she's got the tall stature. I have a tall personality. Yeah, she has a tall personality. I don't feel like a short person. No. No. You don't give short person energy at all, actually. Yeah, my family would say, oh, it's a good thing you're not tall, because you'd just be a tyrant. <laughs> <laughs> just be impossible. <laughs> I don't believe that. I don't just believe telling that. people what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Let me find out. Now, so, okay, so the show, it, it's more supernatural based, but yep. how would you describe it to people who are listening who haven't seen the preview yet, yet or a trailer? Oh my God. Uh, this is a supernatural, paranormal, creepy Ooh, show. Like creepy. With a horror comedy edge. It's a fine line we're trying to walk. It really is. But I love it that there's just like just this intensity you're running up against um, people trying to figure things out from all these different directions you know spiritual religious scientific uh, you know just nuts and bolts let's go beat it <laughs> go beat it with a stick but also there are these moments of levity just just moments unexpected where you would just burst out laughing and I mean I actually got a little sneak peek of what everybody's gonna see mm. tonight um, I was so excited and just, yeah, the moments that I found myself laughing and smiling and I was like, you haven't even met all the funny <laughs> characters yet. <laughs> there's still so many, there's still so many moments to come and I can't wait for people to see it. Is that what you feel kind of makes it different? Because obviously, especially right now, a lot of horror, kind of sci-fi-ish, you know, supernatural themes are out yeah. there for shows. Is that what makes yours different from the rest? I think so, absolutely. And you know, we don't we don't tread lightly around some kind of hot button issues. Okay. You know, there there is that kind of spiritual aspect to it. There is that scientific thing. We religion does sort of feature. You know, and I know that's going to kind of rub people the wrong way or challenge. Uh, you know how they look the show, but I love anything that's gonna stir up conversation like that, you know? What do you actually think about this? If this was a real thing, and maybe it is, uh -oh. <laughs> maybe it could be, we don't know. Bit. You know, where where do you really stand? Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the comedy is definitely what I think is gonna set us set apart, aside. and I think it's, it's just, it's kind of the magic of the show. <laughs> 
I would say that. Um, and we have we we have our fearless leaders to thank for it. Simon Barry and Dennis Heaton. Yeah. Yeah. Great track record. Hello. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good start. Let's start there. But well, we have a little uh, sneak peek of the trailer that Ooh. we were just kind of describing. We'll play it for you right now. Rough day. Oh, yeah. Well, better than yesterday. Oh, hey. You're uh, that freak? No, I was gonna say that. Psychic's kid. Freaks are some of my favorite people in the world. I guess this is where I'm supposed to comfort you. We've never had death like this. Holy shit! Unholy shit. You mean father. We do not fight against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces of evil. Are you ready to face what you've done? There's nothing to know, Billy. There's only what you want. Oh, Jesus, why do you still sound like a magic fucking eight ball? What do you want? So you see dead people? Yeah. Just like the... Just like the movie, yeah. What if Roman's body generates a unique signature? As far as I can tell, he's nothing more than ghost garlic. Everyone get out of the forest now! Run! Run! What is he saying? It sounded like Ron. Ron. Who's Ron? Holy shit! If a soul wants to move on but finds itself trapped, that soul will lash out at the living. When you say I have this gift, I don't know what the hell you're talking about, because nothing good has ever come from this there gift. There you have it. I gotta give that a clap right there. That was intense. I mean, I didn't know, I didn't know what to look at, what to stop looking at. You know, it seems like it has a variety of different aspects of horror too. You know? I mean, sorry, I've seen Even it a you couple two times, jumped, but it's still. You like... jumped. You jumped during the scene. Your publicist in here. I saw her jump from my peripheral. <laughs> I mean, that's intense. I can't wait to watch tonight. And there it is, you know, and, and, and looking at it again, seeing everybody, there are some s stellar performances in this. Like, just, you can't take your eyes off so many people. Um, the, the comedy, but then I'm remembering all those really heartfelt human moments. Yeah. You know, these are families, these are co-workers, these are siblings, these are lovers, you know, that, that run up against something unimaginable. Meatloaf, by the way. I mean, meatloaf. Like, I, th I thought that was meatloaf when I meat saw that clip. Meatloaf a day. Meatloaf was kind of amazing. He killed it. Yeah. See? I All-star cast. Rock legend. Rock legend. You, you are going I mean? to... Let's just start there. Let's just start right there. <laughs> if you don't know who Meatloaf is, you need to, you know, Google him right now. He wrote me a note and he told me he loved me. Uh oh, see, Candace is special. <laughs> see, outside of Meat Love, is there somebody else that you enjoyed kind of working with um, from that cast? Because it's such a, a diverse cast and a lot of talent on there. Is there like a couple people that their scenes to you, you were like, wow, this is this is a really new and different scene that I've never done before. Oh my goodness, uh, so many times, and behind and in front of the camera, uh, getting to work with some of the directors that we had on board. But um, I mean, Avenjoga is just really a pleasure 
to be around. Yeah. He's got such ease. He, he he just embodies what it is that he's doing and kind of draws you in. He also happens to be just a really nice person. <laughs> Rarity in <laughs> it's this really business. easy to get along with. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Vincent D'Onofrio, you can, I mean, I would just stand uh, yeah. on set and watch. Yeah, yeah. And I can, watch I'm Vincent, excited to see his scenes. You know, actually, yeah. uh, in, you know, I would have scenes with him, and when I didn't, I would just stand on set and be with him, <laughs> just be there watching <laughs> just be in his him. Presence. Just like, I mean, sometimes you would just want to get up close to the screen. Like, people in Video Village would just be like, <sighs> like nobody wanted to breathe or move. Wow. He, he's so commanding. Meatloaf killed it. And he's so, like, in it. As soon as he walks on set, he's like, in character. He is it. He yeah. is Doug, and that is it. Like, <laughs> asking for water, or sitting down, or getting up, whatever he's doing, he's he's doing it. Um, Sharon Taylor, who's a Canadian actress, you saw her there doing the little that thing, is phenomenal, and she's such a remarkable person. She's like, a, she's like a black belt, and she rides horses and she weapons, and like she just kickboxing and just like does all these crazy things, and like but is just about the, the nice sweetest person. Because <laughs> she knows she can kick your ass. I will be posting <laughs> some pictures of Sharon and I when we at, went out dancing. She may not know about it, but it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and then you play a character, Landis Barker. What's yes. Landis all about? Candace Landis. Candace Landis. You know everybody calls me Candace I'm Landis sure they on do. Yeah. all day, on the mic. I bet. Anybody got a 20 on Candace Landis? She's by Crafty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Landis Barker, she, I'm a theoretical physicist. I'm always excited about playing women in science, particularly women of color in science, yeah. um, on television. And um, I love that I learned that theoretical physicists are kind of like the crazy people of the physics world. Sorry, theoretical physicists in the world, <laughs> I'm calling you out. <laughs> um, my constant companion a lot of the time in the show you'll see uh the character paulo jones dr paulo jones um played by the wonderful andrew moxham uh he's an experimental physicist so they have to be right every time i only have to be right one time ah the pressure's off a little so, bit for you yeah okay. well no because i'm just she's like the madcap dreamer oh. so actually you of, have more pressure of, than mm, in our reality right because i have to prove yeah. something really enormous that other people don't understand. I have to prove that, right? Um, but yeah, uh, I got to play with a lot of really cool sets and cool things. I had a big, like, I have a big machine in my office and a cool, like, all the formulas I had to memorize. We had somebody uh, with that kind of mind on set as a kind of tech advisor, mm -hmm. and I would get them to print out formulas for me, and I would watch videos of wow. Neil deGrasse Tyson and Richard Feynman and like try and wrap my wrap my head around it um, but yeah Landis uh, she's here she finds herself in Portmore basically because she fell on her face in what way she had a theory that she was really sure about that she was right and it turns out maybe she wasn't hmm. um, but we'll find out We'll see. During the episodes, <laughs> right. We'll see. We'll see if she was right or not. The thing is, she doesn't think she's wrong. Okay. Theoretical physicists never think they're wrong. Okay. <laughs> Look at you throwing that physicist knowledge right there. I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing. But I did talk to one. Yeah. I would imagine it would be a lot of research that you had to do. Just like you were saying, you were reading a lot, especially to play a physicist. Like that's that I, seems very intense. I come from a family of really smart people. Oh, okay. I'm just the artist. You're the artist. Sure. The smart artist. Uh, no, but uh, I called my aunt, uh, my Auntie Andrea, my, uh, or as I call her, my obling, hmm. my auntie sibling. <laughs> she calls me her nibbling, <laughs> her niece sibling. <laughs> uh, and I was like, obling, I, do you, are any of your friends theoretical physicists? I need to talk to one. And she was like, yeah, give me 20 minutes. And I was talking to a theoretical physicist at the University of Cape Town wow. on Skype in 20 minutes. Wow. Yeah. That's, you know, that's pulling the trigger for you right there. <laughs> right? That's, she knows some people. I know people. She knows some people. <laughs> now, you also have a very interesting background. You kind of mentioned it. I mean, you're mm -hmm. not only Canadian, but yes. you are South African. Mm -hmm. So how did you, you know, transition from being that far place to being in Canada and growing up there? So yeah, at an early age. And I sort of spent 
like I spent my teenage years in both places. I would go back and forth. So like I got here when I was 11, I went back when I was 13. I came back when I was 16, I went back when I was 18. I, like I, would, I did that all through my teens and my 20s. Um, if you and I were having this interview in South Africa, I would sound different. Mm. Give us a little, <laughs> give me like, give me your alternate, you know, sound in South Africa. Do you know what it is? It's so hard to do. Like when I'm in South Africa and people are like, sound American. And I'm like, it sounds weird to me. And then when I'm here, they're like, sound South African. And I'm like, it sounds weird to me. Cause it's all, it's just in my ear. In ear yeah. yeah. It's just, my ear just naturally kind of switches, but let's see. Um, uh, okay. I'll try my best to start answering questions as if I was at home in Durban. See, all my friends would still say, oh, she's talking with a twang, eh? Yeah, it's, it's, it, it has a twang, <laughs> kind of a British, Australian kind of... Yeah, because I, gr I grew up in a British colony. Okay. Yeah. I kind of hear, I definitely yeah. can hear that a little bit. Yeah. And that's probably made some interesting characters, too. Were you one of those people when you were a kid, you were making up all these different characters with different voices, you could do different, you know, accents, you know, and studied a lot of that I was formula? The, I, was the, I was the singer and the dancer. I heard you have a lot of skill singing. Lots of From skills. who? You know, just, uh, you know, I know people in the streets, I'm just saying. And <laughs> I heard it? that, you know, I'm in that the, you have a I'm great in the voice. Streets? I heard you have a great voice. <laughs> I was actually going to, I was going to wait till the end of the interview to get to that and ask you to give us a little streets? sample of this wonderful oh, singing voice. Oh, my goodness. You know, especially Ooh. one of your, you know, maybe a quick line of one of your favorite songs that are out right now, you know, something. Just a quick line. You're so making me nervous. No, Daryl. no, it's no My pressure. Hands started sweating I and say stuff. just drink a little water <laughs> like. and you are good. I have confidence in you. I heard, I'm, I'm telling you what I heard. I have confidence in sunshine. Sorry, what? Uh -oh, what happened? Uh -oh, uh -oh. Is that a little sample? <laughs> we gave us a little sample no. right there. <laughs> that, was a, that was an attempt at a warm up. Um, no, I would like, um, I would get my best friend Marie and uh, the neighbors and I would put on like shows, like pageants. Um, and there would always be a soundtrack, like we did, um, we did Dirty Dancing, of course we did. <laughs> That's the go-to, right? <laughs> uh, we did The Little Mermaid, we would do Mother's Day concerts and Easter concerts, and there would be like waltzes and gymnastic numbers and pets doing tricks and monologues and it was like it was a variety show and did you have audience there or like the oh family, i made everybody did, yeah you know, everybody in the house like with, all with the neighbors girls? everybody <laughs> oh no <laughs> like, no 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 we booked you no know, we had us we put chairs out there was a stage. <laughs> people thing. had to show up you had to be quiet <laughs> <laughs> you knew what industry you were going to go into at a very young age i didn't i never i never imagined it Really? I would never imagine this. All of this, this being when did it change? When did you me. realize? Um, the thing is, you know, growing up in South Africa, and not to say like I didn't grow up in the worst situation. I didn't grow up in the best situation. And apartheid is a crazy thing because it affected different people differently according to what you were allowed to have, mm -hmm. and it created animosity between people because of that. Um, and you can see the repercussions of that at the moment, but, but you know, for all intents and purposes, I had an amazing childhood. I had a pink bike with black wheels and my best friend who had a pool and we used to hang out and like, <laughs> like I, be your I went friend. to school down the street, like I knew everybody on my block, like we'd go to church parties, <laughs> like, you know, life was good. Right. Until you found out that there were places that you couldn't go and people who hated you or would say things to you because of who you are and that you sounded different and you, you know. And it, it's crazy, like my father, who has beautiful blue eyes and he's a little bit lighter than me, but you know, he's still mixed like me. And my father speaks the most beautiful Zulu, mm. most perfect Zulu. But because of just that, like that mentality and that pressure, you know, he never taught me. And I didn't learn it in schools because I didn't go to the right kind of school. <laughs> um, and I try and learn it now because it's so crazy to me that I grew up in a, in a country of 13 national languages and yeah. I don't speak any of them. Yeah. You know, I speak Afrikaans, which is which is cool because mixed people in South Africa um, do speak Afrikaans a lot of the time, like in the South, and it, it, it's actually a beautiful language in that mixed vernacular. It's kind of a slang of the other version yeah. of the other, of high Afrikaans. They call it uh, kombaistal or uh, kitchen, kitchen speak, kitchen, <laughs> kitchen speak. language, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I love that, and there's, you know, there's this movement of like, they call them, in South Africa when I grew up, I called myself colored, right? Mm -hmm. 
I know it's like a hot button I know, issue yeah, that's here. A, I know that, that, it's that a different word, thing in this I've always heard that, context. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and even now it's a different thing, but like, you know, colored people spoke yeah. Afrikaans. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, but there's all this like slam poetry and, and spoken word and plays coming out like in that vernacular as a way to kind of reclaim it and, and be that. And I, I go back to South Africa all the time because I love it. <laughs> I love it. There's so much going on in South Africa. It's such a deeply beautiful, creative, mixed up, challenging, wonderful, crazy place. Like I always encourage people to go and every every time I've brought people with me when I'm there, I've gone, you know, I've shot stuff there and produced and directed and tried to like I try and bring work there yeah. instead of taking work out. Um, but everybody who goes there are like, wow, I, I had no idea this was here. Yeah. And you don't, like the industry there, the music, the film, the television, the art, the fashion, people just walking around on the street just like will put you to shame. Yeah. And people are working with nothing sometimes. You know, they're working with nothing. They're, they're learning things, they're building stuff. It's, it's, there's, there's such ingenuity and entrepreneurship and spontaneity and creativity in that country. I will I will never not be South African. I love never, that. Never, ever. But I love me some Canada. <laughs> Canada's a cool city. <laughs> I love me some Canada. Mm-hmm. I love that I can walk down the street as a woman. I, you know, I can go where I want. I can be independent. I can dream a thing and do it. Yeah. I can speak my mind. I can, you know, like, I love some health care. I got sick the <laughs> other day. Listen, health is, is bomb in, in Canada, boy. I got it's sick great. the other day. What's the doctor? <laughs> it's wait an hour. <laughs> but I got in there and got I got out, and I was all good. <laughs> I didn't get a bill. I didn't have to mortgage my house. <laughs> yeah. So I think a lot of a lot of us are considering Canada about right now. So you know, it's a balance, and I try and keep that balance, and I try and maintain that connection to to both cultures because it is it is my roots but it like i'm just i'm so grateful to live in north america because i don't know that i would live this life yeah if i stayed in south africa maybe i think now it's possible you know yeah Uh, the young people coming up in south africa now it it's challenging you know education and employment and it's it's still challenging. There are a lot of challenges. But I think South Africa is such this uh, such a unique opportunity to be a model for what it can be like. You know, all these races, all this colonialism, all this history, all this stuff that has gone on. To heal that, if we were able to start talking to each other, lo- and and I think I think we are setting an example because there are communities like that that are genuinely diverse. Yeah. Nobody cares. Everybody's speaking your language or a different language or three or four languages. You know, people are about the work, the art, the progress, moving forward, getting it done. And some incredible things come out of that country. I mean, I feel the passion from you. You know, I, you told me I feel like you should be part of the tourism there because if you, if, if I heard this right now, Listen. I would be booking my flight. <laughs> Shout out to Kauteng Tourism. Hey, <laughs> hey, Don. <laughs> <laughs> it's my auntie Don. Um, yeah, she. Yeah, no, I I take people to South Africa all the time. I'm going back. Um, I'm shooting a movie. Uh, Sew the winter to my skin young, hot, up-and-coming director. He's not even up-and-coming. He's, he's already won a bunch of stuff at Cannes. Uh, Jamil Kubeka. Um, it's based on, a, on a, a, a legend of a Robin Hood-esque figure um, within the Eastern Cape in South Africa uh, and, his, and his trial, but, th- but the legend of him. Um, and it's, it's kind of an experimental film that... that script was so crazy. I read the script. It blew my mind. I've been talking to Jamil about some other things, some other projects that we were trying to get done. He's such a cool guy, so talented, so deeply talented. He just came back from Cannes and um, just took it by storm. His movie Sil- Stillborn, which is one of the first mm. African sci-fi films, yeah. um, did so well. And yeah, we're, we're shooting in the Eastern Cape coming, coming up in November, December. And it's a part of the country that I haven't been in a great deal. Um, beautiful. The land is so diverse as well. If we're such a small country, you'll go from snow-capped mountains to deserts to 
r beautiful blue ocean to like and that's where you sh everything shot in between that's where this this is uh being shot in the eastern cape okay. uh so i'm from kwazulu natal which is below mozambique and then further down the coast uh closer to the cape is the eastern cape oh. yeah well, it, you know, you've had such a great career, and, and it's continuing to grow. It's, inter it's an interesting time, I feel like, in the, in the entertainment business because we have come, you know, very far in the last few years mm -hmm. just of our accolades of, of great actors that are being, you know, recognized now, I feel like. Recognized. Recognized. Because they were there. They were there, but now they're being <laughs> recognized. Everybody yeah. caught up to what we already knew. Yeah. But do you feel that with all of these actors and actresses and producers that are being praised that this is something that Hollywood is legitimately recognizing and that there are more roles now for women and men of color and producers and directors. I mean, obviously, producers and directors have to create their own projects in a lot of ways mm. to build this, but for actors and actresses, is there, is there more opportunities that you've seen since you've been in this business for a while? Absolutely. The difference between when I first started working and now is night and day it's astronomical I mean I would be sent in for men <laughs> redheads <laughs> like, just anything that was other anything that was different and my agents would fight to be like I would hear them on the phone why can't this be her why can't they tell me why this person has to be mm. Caucasian why can't it just see her right they tag me on with somebody else just to get me in the room the first role I booked was the character was for a guy. guy. It was a wow. male character. That was that your 1995. Because project? it was the only. It was the only one. Yeah, it was the only pr a c character of color. Wow. <laughs> so they were like, "Can can your character can your black guy be a black girl?" <laughs> <laughs> like, um, and I got it, so that that was cool. But um, but absolutely, there's also a lot more competition. There's a lot more option. You know, there. Right. You would never see people who looked like me in the audition room, very few and far between. Now, you know, there are a host of choices and it's all incredible. And I mean, I really come from a place of like abundance. Yeah. The world is a big place. The universe is even bigger. I think there's more than enough for everybody. Yeah. I don't want all of it. I just want my piece. Does that, does that <laughs> keep you centered, like your form of spirituality and just kind of, like you were saying, you know, it's, it's a lot of competition this industry is so up and down but you have been someone who has had a, a longevity in this career which is tough and does that keep you centered by having that whatever that higher being is for yourself listen i've been through i've been through some rough times i've been through some lows we all do yeah. you know you doubt and there are times when i mean there was some time where i wasn't working and i would I was doing everything I can, you know, I'm in class, I'm doing the thing, I'm trying to get the feedback, and they would just be like, sometimes it's just not your time. Yeah, it happens sometimes, when it's supposed to happen. Sometimes it's just somebody else's time, and yeah. I've learned to take those moments as an opportunity to reflect or to focus on other creative pursuits, you know. Went to South Africa, we, I, I tried my hand at, at producing, did a little directing, the producing is for me, I don't know about the directing. What don't you like about <laughs> directing? Um, uh, it's not that I don't like the directing, I just like the producing more. Okay. Um, I like thinking about it. Okay. I don't think like a director. I, um, I like the idea of taking something and going, okay, how does this work? Who do I know? Where could this be? And these all, these seemingly disparate things. A place, a person, a thing, a piece of music, an idea, these small little things that you weave together and work behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And you'll show up on set and all those things will have come together to make this image, yeah. right? And to hand over those tools um, to a director who can then like funnel that into a mm -hmm. very specific vision. And I can kind of look back and work more on the auxiliary or the support yeah. or like really it's like the creative, more it of the creative portion of it. It's the foundation. Yeah. Yeah. You're given the foundation to build the masterpiece. Yeah. yeah. And I think I'm either, I either want to be like in the middle of the story and like in, in the narrative where my, my sole purpose is to, is to drive that narrative and tell the story as a character. Cause I'm not thinking about, I'm not thinking about the director and the sound guy and the, I'm just thinking about what I have to do and the actor opposite me. Yeah. 
it's my only responsibility and then it's it's a relief <laughs> sometimes like all i have to do is look at you and talk to you that's all i gotta do <laughs> it's just you and me we're gonna work this out <laughs> um or to look at that big picture yeah. and go okay who needs what how do i support this how do we get this to people how do we you know whatever that is um, but the director I find is like that middle person. It's that, is that in between that liaison yeah. that has to speak to the executives and the technical department and the creatives and and keep that balance. That's that. You the like, middle the middleman is like, not for you're me. You like I don't want that balance. I want it in or out. <laughs> in and out. Not in between. <laughs> in and out. I'm out. <laughs> What would you tell your younger self or give advice to your younger self about entering this business? Because there's lots of people who have expectations and these dreams, yeah. and now you have reality TV, and that throws a other, other different element, and YouTube mm -hmm. stars. But what would you tell someone who would like a career like yours and you would tell your younger self? Do not try to squeeze yourself into a box. Don't try to be what you see already. It's true. You cannot read their minds. They don't know their damn selves. <laughs> <laughs> they can write whatever they want on that piece of paper and that breakdown. But what they're looking for is presence. What they're looking for is a feeling that they get from you, yeah. right? That you can that you can send that to yeah. somebody else, and that you can receive it back from from somebody. And the only way you can do that is to be as clearly, authentically yourself as you can. Do not be a mediocre somebody else. Be I a like phenomenal that. you. That's something that should be on a t-shirt. Do not be a mediocre somebody else. I'll, I'm feeling that. I'm going to make a t-shirt. <laughs> Listen, you heard it first. I may be a, in a business deal with you, but you heard it first. And then, and, you know, another thing is, what is, you know, you obviously play these different characters and, mm -hmm. and you have great scripts that you've worked with, but what is something that you found out about yourself as an actress, maybe recently, that you never realized before? You know, I would always struggle with what my process was. My other actor friends, you know, they'd just be like, why, why are you beating yourself up about this thing? Because I did. I, you know, I wasn't, I'm not classically trained. Uh, I didn't go to a fine arts school. I don't have, I don't have any kind of pedigree whatsoever. What I do have is, like, work. Yeah. <laughs> I started on a set. I stayed on a set. I, I looked around. I paid attention. I asked people. And I think where I kind of went off course a little bit in hindsight I mean, everything I've done has brought me to where I am, so I'm gonna, I gotta be grateful for all, for sure. all of it. And, uh, but when I started going, oh, you know, I'm not a thing. I don't have this piece of paper, and I didn't go to that school, and I started looking, so I would go. I'd go to classes, I'd go to workshops, I'd go to teachers. And I'm not saying don't do that, I think at a certain point you need to gather technique, and you need to understand the business, and you need, you know, there are, there are physical laws sure. in this universe that you need to understand yeah. in order to move forward. Certain skills right. you need to have. But once you have those basics, you need to cultivate that process for yourself. And honestly, it's taken me this long to figure that out because I kept trying to supplant what other people were doing in like, going, oh, I should be doing this and I should be doing that yeah. instead of just going, no. <laughs> be you. Just figure out what your natural inclination is, yeah. right? Yeah. You know? Get into your body. Use your voice. Like, find a song. Find a find a place. Find whatever it is that gives you entrance into what that is. You know, a word, a, a reference, whatever it is. Just find a starting point and follow your instincts. Hmm. Um, but I would I would suppress my instincts for a long time because I didn't trust them. I goes, no, you know, this teacher or this technique or this book or this, and like you pay a lot of money. Class. Yeah, then they're, they're not cheap. Whew. <laughs> <laughs> not cheap. <Whew. laughs> but yeah, you know, read the books, do the thing, see the play, be with your fellow actors, talk about the struggles, talk about the wins. Um, but cultivate a process for yourself. And it's only when I started meeting like successful people mm -hmm. and being around people on set and going, huh, yeah, okay. I get you, they, it. You're, yeah. just, you're just doing what yeah. you know what you want to do. Yeah, and that's key. Because it doesn't matter how you get there. It just matters that you do. That you did it. Yeah. That's it. And then you're also involved in a charity. Uh, it's the Care Canada. I've been a longtime supporter of Care Canada. Um, I love their uh, 
woman and girl focused campaigns I really do believe that uh, you make a difference in a, in a girl's life in a woman's life and they change the lives of the people around them um, yeah my it's something my mother's instilled in me you know, for a really long time we've always had uh, you know foster kids are the the kids that we you know we write letters yeah. to and have them up on the fridge yeah. and like and I've seen a few of them grow up now and all over the world and yeah yeah but um, there's so many things that I that I want to do and I think what's something like what's on your bucket list like what's the like give me two things on your bucket list that you want to do in the next year oh that's easy okay um, only the Canadians will, Canadians will know this reference, but I, I played a character named Viola Desmond, whose maiden name was Viola Irene Davis. Yes. So I, I thought that was a... Um, who's a civil rights activist in, in Canada uh, in the 1940s, and I did a Heritage Minute where I, where I played her, and I thought, wow, why, does not, why, why aren't we talking about Viola Desmond yeah. all the time? She's a major you know? activist that people didn't know about. So I got together with the know. writer of that minute, uh, Sharnold Edwards, and um, uh, the director, producer, Grant Harvey, and we've just been like hashing it out and just looking at this world and and writing this story and trying to figure out like how we can how we can bring this to the world because I really think people on both sides of the parallel uh, need to know about Viola Desmond. You know, the community in Nova Scotia, Black Nova Scotians in particular, come from an American legacy in a way. They mm -hmm. It's the same legacy of s slavery. It was the last stop of the Underground Railroad. They, these were black loyalists. These were ex-slaves who became landowners in Canada um, and had all of that stripped away from them, but maintained this resilience and this uh, work ethic and this sense of dignity mm. uh, in the face of, I mean, what was essentially Jim Crow. Yeah. The long and the short of it. It just manifested itself differently in Canada. And actually recently the UN Working Group, I mean, told Canada off a little bit. They were like, you need to apologize, first of all. <laughs> you need to apologize for what you did to people. We recommend that you pay reparations <laughs> because you did just straight up take people's land. Yeah. That's it. Um, and to acknowledge the part that Canada played in slavery because there were slave owners in Canada. Yeah, there was absolutely. slavery in Canada. There were ex-slaves. Ca these are descendants of slaves in Canada. And this idea that it didn't happen there and like we're all, it's just not true. Um, but but Black Nova Scotia and Africville and there was just this amazing, vibrant community of people there. And I'm like, I want I want to know more about that. And I, you know, that's one thing that we've, we've talked about on Black Hollywood Live a lot is a lot of people, you know, feel that we keep telling old stories, but I feel like there's a lot of information that we don't know about yet. I mean, we the good thing is that the new stories that we're seeing are a different angle and a different perspective. So mm -hmm. that's how we grow. I mean, that's I agree it. that we can't re live in the past, mm -hmm. but in order to move to the future, we have to know our history. And yeah. I feel like a lot of people don't know their history, and mm -hmm. I applaud you for the you know that character as well, and just getting involved with that project, just to the fact that a lot of people didn't know about her, mm -hmm. you know, and they should, and you're bringing it to light. She was amazing. I mean, this was she was a young entrepreneur. She went. She couldn't study there. She studied. She went to the states. She went to Montreal to learn her trade. She would teach other women skills, entrepreneur, entrepreneurial skills, how to start their own businesses. She ran a school. She had a product line. She was traveling all over the place. I mean, this was a young woman, like on the up. Yeah. You know, this was an example. There was nothing begrudged or downtrodden about her, yeah. even though she came from a certain kind of circumstance, big family, and but. Um, and she was mixed. She had a black parents and a white parent. So imagine the challenges of that in 1930, 30s and 40s, yeah. you know, yeah. America. So, um, and and regal, beautiful, and you know, dignified, right? I want to see those role models. Those I want to I want to see that that has existed in our community 
always. Well, I have a feeling that you you'll know? be producing a lot more of those projects as well in your, from your you know, lips, from your lips, from your, uh, from what I see with your, um, tr you know, track record, you're doing pretty good, you know. I'm familiar. Well, it's interesting because we're talking about the film you were just in, or th that film in particular, and uh, we have uh, Marshall that's coming out. I, mm. I don't know if you've heard a lot about Marshall. No. It's about Thurgood Marshall. It's coming out mm -hmm. um, from Open Road Films. Uh, it releases tomorrow, mm. and um, we have uh, a clip for that because it is starring Sterling K. Brown from mm -hmm. This Is Us. Uh, Kate Hudson's in it as well. And it is being labeled as one of the best movies of the year. And a lot of people are excited about this. So mm -hmm. we're gonna show a quick clip before we um, get to a little bit more about you. I love this. You gentlemen are making a big mistake. <laughs> This here is Mr. Thurgood Marshall. Man is an attorney. You'll treat him with the respect that he deserves. My great granddaddy, he was a slave. We're not slaves now. We've got weapons we didn't have before. We've got the law. Baby, you go into these towns, we've never seen a Negro lawyer. Hey, boy! You need to be careful. NAACP. Very good. You're going to Connecticut. Joseph Spell, Negro servant attacked socialite in her own bedroom. This case will show the world if a colored man can get a fair trial in the United States. There's only 13 million Negroes depending on you. Don't any of you have any confidence in me? I'd say you have enough confidence for us all. I only represent innocent people, people accused because of their race. That's my mission. I never touched that woman. I need a partner who the jury can relate to. Sam Friedman. Good to meet you, Sam. Hey, give me a hand with these, would you? What have you got in here, cement? Guns. Books, Mr. Friedman. He just sweeps through town, stirring up all kinds of ugliness. My life is on the line here. Hey, Attorney Friedman, hold on a minute. What do you want? You're one of us now, Sam. A real fighter. Step away, you can't take the heat on the battleground. Neither of them have been telling us the truth. He attacked me. I'd advise him to accept the deal. You lied in a sworn statement. Why would you do that? Why'd I lie? Because the truth gets me killed. You can't deny me now. Tell him fish if you want freedom. On the mission. You're gonna have to fight for it. Stop me now. The only way to get through a bigot's door was to break it down. I mean, you know, listen, I'm, I'm gonna go see that as well. That's Chills. that movie looks intense. Obviously, Chadwick Boseman is playing the lead character there, and he's playing Thurgood Marshall. And you know, I already can tell that he's bringing it. He's having a phenomenal year as Black Panther and this. I mean, he's killing it. But Chadwick is. We all know. We know. You know, he's killing it. But th I will definitely be seeing this movie. It's a go-see. It focuses more on the earlier part of Thurgood Marshall's mm -hmm. life um, as he was becoming the American Supreme Court Justice. So it, everybody got, got to check that out, too. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. Go and see that. In a, I mean, if I can walk in those, anything close to that, if I can bring Viola Desmond to anything close to that, I will be a, the happy person. Oh, my gosh. We're going to put that on the universe. Well, you know, Chadwick and I work together. On a, on a TV yeah, show. A TV show. In, yeah. Pers in, yeah. in Mexico City one time. And did yeah. you know then? Did you when you yeah. saw this kid? You're like, he's he's got it. Uh, he was so um, engaged in even the smallest details yeah. of what he was doing, and not in any kind of strident or like, as they say in the islands, bossy. Bozy I, don't know, I, kind of, I, I need you to write these words down. You said like five words I want to use, and, but I want to make sure I use it correctly. I don't want to be looking whack. You know what I mean? Like, I'll be like Bozy. They're like, what are you? No, what are you, that's like, not for what you. are you saying? That's not but. for you, Bozy. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I remember. I remember him making a note about the belt because uh, he played a soldier. Okay. And he was like, no, he wouldn't. And which project was he this? Wouldn't you know, he wouldn't take his belt. There was something about the the, belt. the way the writers had used something that he was wearing and he was like no I wouldn't he's a soldier he yeah. wouldn't do it you know he's very um, specific very very specific it was a it was project called persons unknown okay yeah that's a that was a major project right there I mean I was really excited about that and then I don't know what happened who knows this is a crazy business 
Well, you worked in so many different uh, shows. You, I mean, Supernatural, mm -hmm. you know, all the way down to uh, Battlestar Galactica, down obviously. Down to Battlestar I mean, Galactica. Well, let's just start on Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, you just like, you, you're in some very great TV shows, so that says a lot about your skills and talent. But what's been one of your favorite ones to work on? Outside of, of course, the, the current one that was that we'll be talking about again, Ghost Wars. Ghost Wars. Ghost Wars has been just kind of life-changing, actually. Uh, but we'll get to that. Um, Battlestar Galactica, I mean, Battlestar is just, it's, you know, that sure won a Peabody. I got yeah. to work with, you want to talk about players in the game. I, yeah. mean, <laughs> I mean, the list goes on and off of that show. <laughs> this is, you know, Ron Moore on set there asking my questions, hanging out with Edward James almost like, you know, Mary McDonald and, and Eddie were our, our, our parents on that set. They were our professors and our our confidants and our guiding stars they 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 kept us together yeah it was just it, that was my college education yeah was that show yeah but I've had some amazing moments one of my favorite characters is actually a character named Annie Fisher I played on Dark Angel mm. she, was a, she was a blind woman Jessica Alba Jessica Alba, Jessica Alba days I, I didn't get to work with Jessica um, but that was one I, wor I, wor I worked with Kevin Kevin Durant and okay. he's Kevin amazing yeah. oh my gosh he's amazing what a multi-talented person um, but you know a lot of the time it's just it's different things like I learn so much uh, on these major sets that I'm on um, I did a movie called seventh son and I you know I'm watching Jeff Bridges and Julian Moore and I'm watching that process and what these big budget multi-million dollar sets and yeah. like really intense and stunt training and, and like you know yeah what yeah. that is how they come to set prepare and what they're doing in the scene and like how that just turns on Julian Moore it's like a light switch goes on yeah she's got it camera and she just goes and it's just so like she just being it's crazy actually to watch because you see it in real life and on camera it just she's she got just, it the she's presence just like and it's on yeah. you know and then cut and she's like just back to like <laughs> shooting the shit about lunch <laughs> like, <laughs> like it was no big deal but is if you could describe your career in one word what would it be um what is the word i'm looking for <laughs> unexpected mm, i like that unexpected sitting in durban south africa in Greenwood Park, <laughs> on my grandma's porch, you know, I, I couldn't have imagined any of this. I couldn't have imagined any of this. Yeah. Well, it's well deserved. I've enjoyed uh, talking to you today. I've enjoyed um, also pleasure. watching you just throughout the years. You, uh, you've always been that face that's recognizable and people know your name and you put in that solid work that clearly is paying off for you and I look forward to seeing what you got coming up as well and I'm looking forward to tonight because I'll be watching Ghost Wars on sci-fi oh my gosh I can't wait are you going to do like any uh, live tweeting I will be live show? tweeting I'll be sending out um, some photos like I said me and Sharon out on the town and See? like a little bit of BTS and um, yep I've got some of my friends from other shows I tagged them I was like you gotta watch you gotta Tweet at me. We're gonna we'll be supporting do it up. on BHL. Where can yeah. fans find your social media and, and watch your live tweets and all that fun stuff? Oh yes, all my social media handles are very creative. Uh, Candace McClure <laughs> <laughs> with a K and a Y and an S. Uh, you can find me. Yeah, on the ins on the gram, on the Twitter. I'm on Facebook, but all right. You know, you're not really I'm, checking your Facebook it's, too much. It's the gram and the Twitter. Okay, it's all about the gram and Twitter. It's all about the gram. And we're still trying to figure out Instagram Live. We We're gonna, gonna do it. it. We're gonna work on that. Right We're working now. on it together, actually. Oh We're working You're on it together. You're laughing at me, but it's a real thing. I'm laughing at myself. <laughs> I, don't even, I can't even type and, and take video at the same We're time. We're gonna put a sticker. We're gonna right. do all kind of stuff. Right. Somebody give us instructions. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys for t tuning in to Black Hollow Lives Conversation. I'm your host, Dario Christian. You can find me at Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can also find me Friday nights on uh, The Reels channel for a new show, Broken Famous. I'll be uh, giving some commentary on a lot of celebrities who've uh, had some financial woes, we'll say. Um, but you can also check me out on Black Hollywood Live, and we'll see you again next week. Peace. From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Christie, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African-American entertainment.
For questions and comments, contact us. Info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at DHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live. Scipio, Instagram me at KingXO Bay. Thanks for tuning in. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.